are these people? You and special repertoire Francesca Albanese, right? I am starting to think with horror that if it's not stopped, Israel's assault can end up ex exterminating almost the entire population in Gaza over the next couple of years. What do you see in the future here? Like, you know, where do you see this uh, genocide? Is there a way to stop it? Uh, you know, what's your timeline there? I'm sorry for looking at my phone. I just wanted to I wanted to get a quote. So first of all, you know, I, I, I applaud Francesca for speaking out so uh, strongly and honestly. I mean, I haven't been following her, so uh, I, I'm not a, aware of all her stances, but at least, you know, in this regard. Um, uh, I guess back to what I was just saying about resistance, like, uh, because UN hand-wringing is not going to end the genocide, you know? Um, like, Israel doesn't know the language of law or international law, and international right. law doesn't even matter anyway, does it? Right. It, no. it doesn't matter when it came to Syria or Libya or Iraq, so it's yeah. really, like, I know people I know states and leadership strive to say we're adhering to international law, but when the West absolutely never will, nor will Israel, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, in, in which case, then, the only thing that will end it is the resistance. Um, but also, this is the quote I was looking for, and I'm sure you're already aware of it, but um, so I'm just quoting an article I wrote, which was published on September 9th. So um, this roughly right here. two weeks prior. <laughs> probably oh yeah 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 no i i will say that's that's not my title i don't mind so much that th that was the title the editor chose yeah and i understand why because it's a way of drawing people in right because obviously right. it's not just a war but anyway um at near the end of that article uh i i quoted um retired israeli general yitzhak brick um mm. who said israel's sick israel's sinking deeper into the gaza mud losing more and more soldiers as they get wounded or killed killed or wounded Without any chance of achieving the war's main goal, well, I mean, we don't, the war's main goal is not bringing down Hamas. Israel knows it couldn't. The, war, his, the war's main goal is genociding Gaza and Palestinians in Gaza. Anyway, he says that the war's main goal, bringing down Hamas, the country is galloping toward the edge of an abyss. If the war of attrition uh, against Hamas, sorry, against Hamas, I don't, that's weird. Anyway, he says Israel will collapse within no more than a year if it continues its war. Yeah, galloping now, the reason I, I balked, towards the edge of an abyss, reason, right? Um, yeah, um, the reason I balked there, because it said if the war, of, I, I don't know why I didn't notice this before, <laughs> because he said, he, oh, he said if the war of attrition against Hamas and Hezbollah continues, but it's actually the opposite, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. they're, uh, they're, they've taken losses, but they're extremely well equipped and they have a, a, a vast, uh, a support base and vast and and I, I don't know the exact numbers of uh resistance fighters in each group plus there's also islamic jihad and other palestinian resistance but so the war of attrition really is against israel right so that's why i balked <laughs> i didn't notice that before but anyway there's that like and he's not the only one other people talk about the um economic hits israel is taking yeah. with all its illegal colonists fleeing the northern areas and other other uh israelis fleeing so there's that as well yeah whereas you know palestinians uh particularly in gaza but also like throughout uh, occupied palestine are incredibly yeah. resilient and they've learned how to make do with the bare minimum and that's not something israelis can do they've they've had this privilege of having a very uh, privileged privileged existence i mean this is a minor example but back to 2007 in the west bank I remember uh, for a couple of weeks, I was um, staying in Hebron uh, with other activists. And at one point, there was just no water. And the reason was Israel had turned off the tap. Basically, they cut the water supply to... Right. Uh, I, I can't remember. I don't remember now if it was all of the West Bank or just, or just, just, I don't mean that, or, or Hebron. But the point being, they turned off the tap. They deemed um, that Palestinians had used their allotted mount for that quarter or something <laughs> like that. And and yet you you go uh, past one of these illegal um, Jewish colonies and they have sprinklers on and swimming pools. You know, they yeah. have no problem with water, whereas Palestinians can't bathe their kids or flush their toilets or et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's a minor point. But just to highlight that really, uh, 
I, I would say most Israelis, there might be some exceptions, like Israelis who have a conscience that are uh, go to uh, Ramallah, go to Belain and stand in solidarity with Palestinians. There are Israelis who do that or refuse nicks. But aside from that, the vast majority of Israelis just live a very comfortable, um, privileged life. So, you know, when they start feeling the impact of uh, Hezbollah attacks and other resistance attacks, uh, they flee, then right. there's there's yeah. the economical failure of Israel as well. Well, it's interesting you say that, and they have that option to leave, and yeah. Palestinians can't. Mm -mm. So, yeah, yeah. So, Eva, just what do you think will happen in the next few years in the region if the West continues to placate to Israel? Well, I mean, I I really like, <laughs> quite frankly, the notion that Israel uh, has brought about its own demise and that it doesn't really matter if the West tries to placate Israel, that <laughs> it won't be possible because Israel won't exist. This is not obviously a hate that I have to give this disclaimer or whatever this caveat. This is not a call to kill Israelis. That's not what I'm talking right. about. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm sorry. One of you mentioned the two state solution is just right. absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. I basically so, say it's it basically say, especially for black people, if you didn't like Jim Crow, you should be against that because that's essentially what it is. Yeah. But more importantly, it's like we're hearing that talking point from Western leaders. You're not asking Palestinians what they want. Right. What do they want their liberation to look like? And that's kind of the focus that we're trying to get people to get to. Don't listen to what media tells you. Yeah. Is, or the talking points that media tells you, especially BB has been against <laughs> a two state solution forever. So, how can Kamala say we're looking for a two state solution when Daniel, who's clearly said that's a non starter for him? So, mm -hmm. but that's what people are voting for and not necessarily thinking about. So, yeah. but I think, it, but that's why we asked that question is between all of that, of what we see here, but what you see over there, and you understand the oppression that Palestinians are going through, like, so I think for us in our audience, we kind of, we do see it as a sense of urgency 